make a decision who you're going to allow in because we have an enemy of our soul, the devil. Sometimes the issues that we have is that we're dwelling on the memories of the past and that's creating fear and the enemy's using that to control us. That's why when Jesus cast out evil spirits, he called them unclean spirits because any spirit that's not of God is unclean by its sinful nature. You are the only person who can decide which thoughts are allowed and which thoughts aren't. the higher life my name is Jenny and in this series it's all about the wellness of our souls in fact we're going to learn how we can gain control over our thought life so that we can live in the fullness of blessing and freedom and healing that Jesus won for us on the cross now to help us get into the depth of God's word concerning our soul I would like to introduce the panel to you we have have Christine Blumstein from Kenneth Copeland Ministries Africa. We have a powerful minister of the gospel, Katie Souza from Expected End Ministries in the USA. And Dr. Michelle Stradon from Eagles Wings Ministry, really been a blessing to people all over the world. we've been speaking about the soul and in the next two programs we're actually going to begin to understand how the brain works and how thoughts are actually processed and formed inside of our minds let's get into the word and find out more about this Here we are again around this table, <laughs> ready to discuss the truth of God's word concerning the soul. Now, ladies, if you remember, we actually had, I like to call it a peg mark, our first peg mark to understand when we pay attention to our thoughts, the very first thing we need to do is understand the source of those thoughts. How do we know if what we are thinking is of God or if it's of the devil or if it's just plain us? Michelle, what would you say just to help us recognize those thoughts? Yeah, it's very important what you said, um, Jenny, uh, that our thoughts can come from three possible sources. They can be our own thoughts, they can come from the Holy Spirit, and sometimes they can come from the devil and his kingdom. And we found an easy way to help us discern if a thought in our mind is of God, if it matches with his word, if it's from the Holy Spirit, or if it's a lie coming from the devil's kingdom, is just to add in Jesus' name at, at the, the end, end of, of that, th th that thought. <laughs> so if it's a thought that's from um, the Lord's kingdom, it's going to make sense. It's going to harmonize within our spirit. So for example, if you have a thought in your mind that says, I know that I can do this because I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus' name, that makes sense. It goes together. It harmonizes. But if you have a thought in your mind that says, I'm such a useless good for nothing in Jesus' name, well, it's rather it obvious. It doesn't go. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's rather obvious what, th what kingdom a thought like that is coming from. So we really need to uh, become aware of the fact that not all the thoughts in our minds are our thoughts. Um, in the last episode, we mentioned Ephesians 6 verse 12, which says we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness and spiritual forces of wickedness. So it's describing this invisible kingdom that answers to Satan, um, consisting of what we would say evil spirits. And in John 10 verse 10, it talks about how um, Jesus came to give us an abundant life that right. overflows. But it says that the thief comes to steal, kill That's and right. destroy. And he wants to even steal, kill and destroy in our health. So how does he do that? Well, it's very important to understand how disease develops through what is called the spirit-soul-body connection. I like, can we say that again? Mm. Did you hear that? I, I want this is you. In fact, Michelle's going to take us on a little journey here to bring it all together. Spirit, 
body soul connection mm. sorry for interrupting michelle but no, very good so yes in our previous episodes we were talking about the three parts of our being so it's important first of all to understand the pathway of disease and how it develops mm. and that then gives us insight into how the enemy's kingdom works right. so that we can use god's word to defeat and overcome him right. so it starts in the spiritual realm for example in 2 timothy 1 verse 7 it says god has not given us a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. Now, what that scripture is showing us is that fear is not primarily a thought or an emotion, it's a spirit. Correct. So it begins in the spiritual realm. So how it works is the spirit of fear wants to put disease on us, and the devil knows that all he has to do is to train us in a different way of thinking that is opposite to God's way of thinking and yes. opposite to his ways. So, for example, in Matthew 6, verse 31, Jesus said to give no thought for tomorrow. In other words, don't worry about the future because I'll help you to deal with whatever hard thing comes up when the time comes. Love so that. we're told not to worry about the future. So he will get us to do the opposite, which is to worry about the future. So how it works is the spirit of fear will put thoughts in our minds at the level of our soul in the first person. So the thoughts will come into our minds such as, oh, my goodness me. I'm so stressed. I'm so worried. What's going to happen with my finances? What if this goes wrong? What if that happens? And because those thoughts came in the first person, we think they are our thoughts and feelings. And so we follow that way of thinking as if it were us. Thinking and, it's responsible. Yes. And thinking that, you know, those are our thoughts. And so we start to get stressed and anxious and worried and fearful mm. in our minds, which is our soul. So notice we started in the spiritual realm, but now we're in the realm of our soul, which is our mind, our free will, and our emotions. And so we're starting to get worried and anxious, and we're meditating on these thoughts of fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. And so now we're in the realm of the soul, and as we're meditating on these thoughts, we're going to talk in this session what happens on a physical level in our brain, where we start now to build memories. The more we meditate on those thoughts of fear, the stronger memories of fear become in in our brain so now that fear has become a part of us physically in our body in the form of that long-term memory and so now we've actually become one with the spirit of fear oh in my. spirit soul and body just by agreeing with that thought yeah. and meditating yeah. on it so yes we're one with the spirit of fear now in spirit soul and body which by its fallen nature wants us to think that god can't take care of us so we must worry about tomorrow so now that fear is a part of us physically, and we've got the law of sin working in us now as a part of our existence. And then what then happens physically is that uh, physical memory of fear in our brain, uh, which we're going to speak about in the session, how it works and how it forms, stimulates a stress reaction in our body. And during the stress reaction, you've got two um, nervous systems in your body called the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And I don't want to overwhelm you with the medical detail, but just to put it in short, the sympathetic nervous system becomes overactive and it overstimulates the blood vessels, making them what's called vasoconstrict, which means they become more narrow. So now you've got the same volume of blood that has to flow through a smaller space and that now increases your blood pressure mm -hmm. so that it becomes too high. So I basically explained how high blood pressure develops exactly. through the spirit soul body connection. And that sets the stage for you for over 700 diseases that we're dealing with today wow. that develops in that pattern through the spirit soul body connection. So now you've got high <laughs> blood pressure and, um, and it starts to cause all sorts of problems and disease in your body. And, um, you know, what typically happens is we go to the doctor because we're not feeling well and he measures your blood pressure and he says, my goodness me, th this, your blood pressure is dangerously high. This can cause strokes and kidney damage and heart attacks. And Another thought. And, and you thought you had fear when you first walked into his office. <laughs> you know, now you've really got reasons to worry about the future. You know, now you've got the fear of death. Yeah. And, the, and uh, the doctor's right, because if our, high blood, if our blood pressure remains high, it does cause all of those complications. And so you say, oh, my goodness, what should I do, doc? And he says, oh, don't worry. We've got high blood pressure medication, like, for example, beta blockers. That will block that stress reaction and that over -sympathetic, overactive sympathetic nervous system, and you'll be fine. So you breathe the sigh of relief, and you go, oh, great. So this is like an antibiotic, right? Take it for 10 days, and then I'll be fine. And he says, no, I'm sorry, it's been my experience that you're going to have to be on these drugs for the rest of your life. Wow. And without the, taking these drugs, you could die. 
these drugs are the only thing that are going to keep you alive. And, um, and so, you know, we go and we buy our uh, prescription drugs and then you start taking them. And then you go for your follow-up visit and your blood pressure is rechecked again. But, and it's, it's come down and so it appears now you're out of danger. But now that you're on prescription drugs, have you become a doer of the Word of God? Mm. Now that you're on prescription drugs, have you overcome the fear and the anxiety behind it? And no, we haven't. So that's why actually we're just being taken into a deeper level of bondage. So anyway, that helps us to understand how disease develops through the spirit-soul-body connection. Wow. And when we talk about healing, it happens through exactly the same pathway, through the spirit-soul-body connection, where we have to begin where the problem started in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So the problem began with a spirit of fear. Um, in the last episode, Katie mentioned uh, 2 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, we, um, Abba Father explains to us that he wants our spirit, soul, and body to be sanctified. Absolutely. And so it began in the spirit with the spirit of fear, so our spirit needs to be sanctified. In 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, it says that we must cleanse ourselves from all filthiness mm. of the flesh and spirit. Mm. And so what is filthiness of the spirit? Well, anything that's not of God is unclean by its fallen sinful nature. Mm. So I just explained, for example, how a person with high blood pressure has become one with the spirit of fear in spirit, soul, and body. And that's not a clean spirit, that's an unclean spirit. It doesn't match God's nature. And so we've got to cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the spirit. That's why when Jesus cast out evil spirits, he called them unclean spirits, because any spirit that's not of God is unclean by its sinful nature. So all we need to do is to repent before Abba Father for listening to the lies of the spirit of fear. And then we need to take up our authority in Christ and command that spirit of fear to leave our lives in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that is simply sanctification of the spirit. The word sanctification means cleansing, getting rid of filth. So you're cleaning your spirit by getting rid of that spirit of fear that is not of God. So there we've dealt with the spirit where the problem began. Then we move to our souls, where our souls need to be sanctified. And uh, for example, in uh, Ephesians 5 verse 21, I think it is, it says that we are cleansed through the washing of the, the water, water of the, the word. word yes. In John 17 verse 17, it says, sanctify them by your word. Your word is, your truth. Word is truth. And um, Katie also quoted that scripture from James where it says, his implanted word is able to save our save souls. Our souls yes. So this is the renewing of the mind part where we need to put in the time and the effort to spend time in God's word and retrain ourselves to think like he thinks, mm -hmm. which in this case is not to have fear and worry, mm -hmm. but to trust in him with all our hearts, etc. Mm -hmm. So we need to study the word of God, what it has to say about fear and anxiety. Wow. As we are retraining ourselves in our soul, renewing our mind, which is the sanctification of our souls, physically, there's also physical changes happening in our brain where slowly those poisonous memories of fear are now being replaced by healthy, life-giving memories um, of peace, love, joy. Those are the things that, you know, cast out fear. Yes. And uh, so as we're building those memory trees in our brain physically, those memories then stimulate a reaction that breaks the stress reaction in our body. That brings balance to the two nervous systems. So the sympathetic nervous system is no longer overactive. It doesn't overstimulate the blood vessels. The blood vessels widen, and now your blood pressure comes down, and you no longer need the and drugs. And you don't need the pills for <laughs> the rest of your life. <laughs> so uh, to put it in short, that sanctification of our spirit, soul, and body, where sanctification of the body is removal of disease and everything that destroys it. Whoa. Powerful. Wow. That is powerful. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Katie, while Michelle is talking, I see that you like, whoa, because this is, this is again That's your message. That synopsis yes. uh, was just like, wow, talk about the whole message right there in six minutes. That was incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. And, and there's so much scripture to back up what you're saying. I mean, mm -hmm. just in essence, like in Mark 5, the, the story of the man with the spirit of legion. I love that story. Oh my yes. gosh, that's that's this being, yes. being played out, okay? Yes. I mean, he's being assaulted by a demonic spirit, right? Now we know that that spirit was attacking, part of the attack was against that man's mind because when Jesus delivers him, it says he sat there clothed and in his right mind. Yes. Okay, so that spirit was tormenting him. Now, we know that Legion does that to people. He speaks words of worry, fear, 
um, anything, anything negative, he puts that in your mind. I mean, think about it. Legion was the most talkative demon in the New Testament. Where did he? He just talk, 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 chatter, chatter, chatter. Oh, Jesus, my name is Legion, for we are many. Oh, Jesus, don't send us out of the region. Oh, Jesus, send us in the pigs. You know, I mean, he was talking more than any other demon. So he loves to speak and put thoughts in our mind to drive us crazy. Right. And that man was being driven crazy. He was beating, bruising, and cutting himself with stones. No one could restrain or tame him. Night and day he was living among the tombs naked. Okay, but that was, this assault against him was an assault against his mind and his soul. Yes. It says that man was dwelling among the tombs. It says it three times. Night and day he was among the tombs. He was dwelling among the tombs, in the tombs and in the mountains. So if the Bible is saying something three times, we need to pay attention. Absolutely. So what does that mean? He was dwelling among the tombs. Well, you know, Michelle talked about how sometimes the issues that we have is that we're dwelling among the memories of the past, and that's creating fear, and the enemy's using that to control us. When you dwell among the tombs, you're dwelling among the pain or the memories of your past, the traumas you've been through. The divorces that you've had, to, you know, that you've had in your life, the, the loss of your children, your financial failures that you've gone through, relationships that have failed. When we're dwelling among the tombs, we're dwelling, thinking about those negative memories of those horrible things and those traumas and those situations that have happened to us in our lives. And that man was dwelling among the tombs. He was dwelling among the pain of his past. Tombstones represent pains, death, losses. And, that, and it's so interesting because that word dwell there, if you look it up in the Greek, it means powers that are said to pervade, control, and govern the soul. Yes. Legion was able to pervade, to govern, and control that man because of what was in his soul. Because he was totally unable to give up the thoughts, the memories, the dwelling that he was doing in his mind on the pains of his past. Now those things, him dwelling among the pain of his past, dwelling among the tombs and the losses, also caused physical issues. Because the Bible says that he sat there when Jesus delivered him, he sat there clothed in his right mind. So his mind was healed of all that chatter that Legion had put on him to try to control him, to try to wound his soul. But that word right mind, he sat there in his right mind, it also means to be healed of diseases. Yes. So the physical diseases, Michelle yes. was talking about how your, your blood, your veins constrict and the blood now, the same amount of blood having to go through the smaller vein, creating the blood pressure issues, creating yes. the stress issues, and then putting you on medication for life. I mean, it's all connected to the soul. It, it's, it's 3 John 2. You will prosper and be in health even yes. as your, your soul, soul prospers. prospers. Yes. That spirit of legion, a demonic spirit, was assaulting that man's soul, speaking words into him. That man was allowing it to happen Very good. by That's dwelling good. on the bad memories. That's good. Did you get that? And allowed it was creating it. a physical assault against him. Okay, he was beating, bruising, cutting himself, running around naked. Who knows what diseases he has? Because again, that word, sat there clothed in his right mind, means to also be healed of disease. All the things you just said are just so connected. We've got to contain our brains. If you catch yourself thinking about over and over again about what your ex-husband did to you, yep. or what a boss did to you, or what you went through when you lost your home or your kids, and you're still dwelling among those tombstones, you probably have a spirit like legion on you, controlling you and causing you disease and disorder of every kind and ruining your life. Whoa, that is so powerful. Whoa. Okay, so I have to say something. Christine, tell me if you agree with me, but something that stood out with what both of you spoke about is how you spoke, Michelle, about how when I paid attention to that thought, the, the negative, fearful thought, I became, or I, I don't know, if, did you say I became one with the spirit of fear? In spirit, soul, and body. Yes, you've, you've now allowed him a foothold in. Yes. You said the same thing, Katie, yes. the same thing. How you allow, by you allowing the negative thoughts to become a part, you are the only person who can decide which thoughts yes. are allowed and which thoughts aren't. Jesus doesn't do that for you. He's done everything on the cross already. Yep. The devil doesn't force you. Uh -huh. You say yes, yes or you thought. say no. Right. Amen. But when you say yes to negative thoughts, what are you doing? You opening up and saying, okay, come, I'm going to come in line with what you are saying. I'm coming into agreement with what you are saying. Hey, come on. Well, Tell me what you think. 
yes, you ask if I'm in agreement. Yes, I am. And I just want to bring this. Legion was actually 60,000 demons that possessed that man. Because when Legion is spoken about in the Bible, it's talking about the Romans. And they were a legion of 60,000 demons that controlled that man. So he decided to, uh, like Katie has said, he allowed them to, to, to possess him, to, to take control of his life. Because in the word of God, in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, as a man thinketh, thinketh so good. shall his life be. Mm. Yes. And like I've said before, and mm. Michelle has spoken about it, and we've all spoken about it, we have to take, and in fact, it's not us saying it, it's Jesus saying it, take every thought captive. Mm. Take every thought captive and you make a decision who you're going to allow in. Because we have an enemy of our soul, the devil. And he doesn't like you. He doesn't like us. He wants to destroy us. And where he starts is in your thought life. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way that he, I call it the devil's playing field. That he can talk to you um, through. He can't speak through your spirit. Because your spirit is reborn. And so he has no right to your spirit, man. And like I've said, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive inside of us. And when you allow legion and all these demons to come and take possession of your soul, it's only you and legion that will be at that party. Mm. Okay? Big only great. you and legion will be at that party because Jesus will not be there. But see, Katie said it and... In fact, the word of God says it. But when mm -hmm. Jesus came on the scene, on. the enemy actually, legion actually addressed Jesus and said, what is it that you want to do with us? Do not torment well, Jesus. what? Because he, he, he recognized. He, he, he recognized Jesus. The enemy recognized Nothing the word. He recognized the word. And he said, do not okay. torment us. But Jesus came on the scene, and Jesus came on your scene when you gave your life to him, when you accepted him into your life. He came on the scene, and every knee, legion 60,000, they have to bow their knee. Because you have the name that is above all other names, the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every sickness, every disease, every cancer, every diabetes has they have no choice. They have to bow their knee. Mm -hmm. And they will ask you, and they will ask Jesus, why have you come to torment us? You cannot. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive inside of you. And sickness and disease cannot coexist in your body with the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, yes, we have touched on something that is it's actually going to bring a waterfall <laughs> of stuff. Okay, see, Katie is so ready. But we are already coming to the end of this program. Yeah. But that's okay because yeah. there are several more to come. <laughs> but really, I, I think let's understand exactly where we are at at the moment and, and where we are going to even go more. I have had so many people with this question say, how can I be a born-again child of God? Does that mean that I can also be... A, demon possessed or um, mm. can I be tormented or is there a difference and we're going to go into all of that okay we will get into that in our next program but first of all understand we put that peg mark down understanding where is the source of your thought where does it come from once you recognize where it comes from then it's your turn to take action and do something about that which is exactly what you're going to do because we, what we're going to speak about because what happens in our minds this it begins in the spirit. So whatever force, whether it's demonic or whether it's of God, that's where the source is. And as you allow that into your mind, it's going to affect everything about you. Not just your attitude, not just your emotions, but either healing or sickness to your physical body as well. I'm sure you at home have so many questions too. Remember to email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com and we will get right back to you. Remember, the choice is going to be yours to make. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's time to decide who's going to be in control of your life.
Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, That's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store. What a powerful program we have just been through. It has been amazing understanding how important every thought is and how the brain can take memory and construct these either positive strongholds in our minds or negative ones and they will influence every part about us even our well-being as far as healing or disease is concerned now i know that you have learned so much but i really feel to thank our studio audience for being such an amazing blessing to us And again, our panel, won't you thank them for being such, as I've always said, a wealth of information. <laughs> and of course, you at home who've been watching and gaining so much understanding concerning the subject of our soul and how we can have such a good, strong, solid base where we allow good thoughts to influence our bodies and we deal with the enemy and get rid of those negative thoughts that build negative memories and poison our lives. I want to encourage you, if you want to know any information concerning the subject matter, you can email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com. Now remember, we've been dealing on the subject of the soul and how every single thought counts. Now in our next program, we're going to go into exactly how our memories are formed and how they influence our lives. Until then, God bless you and goodbye. Brother Hagen used to say, you can't prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you can prevent that bird from building a nest in your head. Correct. So you have to withstand the devil. That man was dwelling among the tombs. What does that mean? When we dwell among the tombs, we're dwelling or thinking about or meditating on constantly the pains of our past. You have the authority to actually say that as long as you don't have anything in common with the enemy going yeah. on the inside of you. Renewing the mind is changing our thinking from an ungodly mindset to a godly mindset. Yes.